I have been trying to share my India journey for five years now, and today is finally the day. Today is the day I commit to sharing the entire month-long journey with you here on the podcast. I've tried to write about this journey before. I've tried to blog about it. I've tried to share videos on it before. And for some reason, it never worked out until now. But now, the timing is right. I have everything planned out. (laughs) And I'm excited to share the journey that forever changed my life. Namaste, and welcome to the Follow Your Path podcast. I'm your host, Vina Lene Rachel. I'm a moon priestess, intuitive, emotional alchemist, and channeler of the divine, and I've been diving into the worlds of the spiritual and metaphysical for over a decade now to self-heal my own trauma, become more emotionally stable, and cultivate my manifestation magic. I am so excited to now be bringing these same tools and techniques to you on this channel. There are a variety of ways for us to work on our higher selves. We can use practices like yoga, meditation, and breath work. We can receive energy work, crystal healing, or pull to row and oracle cards. We can call in our angels, ancestors, spirit guides, spirit animals, or more. Or maybe we find more alignment with astrology and the moon. I'm going to hold space for it all here on this channel. As you navigate each episode, I hope you find the guidance and wisdom you need to find your own path of self-healing and magic. May you become confident and courageous enough to continue to follow the path that best serves you. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel and trusting me to be a part of your unique journey. It truly is an honor to do this work and be here. Let's dive into today's episode. Before I tell you about my official day one of my journey into India, I have to go back and talk about a series of events leading up to almost making the journey not happen. So if you haven't listened to my previous episode on why I chose to go to India, go ahead and check that out. On the episode, I mention Halo Serenko, the leader of this India pilgrimage that I chose to go on. And I kind of talk about why I chose to go on a trip led by her. Now, I didn't know Halo personally. I uh, talk about it on the previous episode, but I came across her on social media and I was listening to her on this webinar, but I felt like I really related to this woman. We had a lot of similarities in our lives and I was very interested to learn more from her. So listening to Halo speak on this webinar, that's what convinced me to go on this particular spiritual pilgrimage that I chose. And this wasn't just a quick trip in planning. This was a trip that took about nine, 10 months of planning to prepare for. I had to get a visa to enter the country. I had to find flights that were affordable. It's not exactly easy to fly across the world or find the right flight connections. Um, a lot of planning going into my business and shutting down my yoga studio for a month while I travel, arranging all my private clients. You know, there was a lot of planning and time and effort and money put into preparing to go to India and preparing to go on this particular journey. So, what would you do? If you had chosen a very particular trip led by a very particular person, you had chosen that trip because of that person, and you had invested nine to 10 months worth of money, time, and planning into said trip, 
what would you do if that person was no longer leading the journey and was no longer going to be there? Because that's what happened to me. So a few weeks, I think it was a few weeks. I don't even think it was a month's notice. If I remember now, it was definitely right around a month or less uh, notice. Halo made an announcement that she wasn't going to be going on the retreat. She had a knee injury and she was worried about walking and doing any of the Indian classical dance, temple dance that we were going to be learning on the retreat. And she made the hard decision to not go. Now she still held the retreat. She still planned on holding the pilgrimage with other teachers leading the way, but she was not going to go. And I have to be honest, when this happened, I was pretty upset. I had chosen this particular journey to learn from this particular woman, and now she wasn't even going to be on the trip. (laughs) My husband didn't want me to go at all. He didn't want me to go around the world For a month, he didn't want me to go on a trip that wasn't um, going to play out as intentionally planned. He really encouraged me to not go after all of this happened. And the truth is, part of the reason I wanted to go to India, in addition to the three reasons I gave in my previous podcast episode, is I really needed to spend some time away (laughs) from my husband. Uh, We'd been married for a couple of years and things were going okay, but we were starting to hit a little bit of a hump. And I really felt like he was distracting me from my spiritual journey. He was distracting me from my ability to grow in spirituality and grow on my own personal development. And I just felt like I really needed to go away, whether it be India or somewhere else, I needed to go away for a bit, for several weeks to have that distance from my husband, to get back to myself, to be with myself and really figure out where I wanted to go from there. You know, did I want to get a divorce when I came back from India? Did I want to move forward and work on our marriage? Did we want to start a family? Uh, There was a lot going on at the time right up before I left for India. So I made the decision to continue to go to India despite the leader of the pilgrimage no longer going, despite my husband telling me that I shouldn't go or trying to convince me to not go. One of the main other reasons I decided to go ahead and go, despite this little hiccup with our pilgrimage leader, is that just a few days, just a few days before my flight, I was going through some of my things. It was my father's birthday. Now, my father has been gone for 10 years now. At the time, he had been gone for five years. And I was feeling really sentimental. I was getting ready to go on this big journey. And I was looking for a watch of his. And I was going through this box of safekeepings. I find his watch. And at the same time, I come across this ring. This promise ring that was given to me by an ex when I was in high school. And we broke up in college. And then I met my husband a few years later. And... I didn't even know that I still had this ring in my possession. I mean, I didn't really have a reason to be keeping it around. I almost felt a little uh, dishonest having it, you know, now being married to my husband and I've got this random promise ring from an ex-boyfriend sitting around in my keepsakes. And that very day, (laughs) it was so weird that I found that ring that day Because that very day, on social media, I had seen a post by said ex-boyfriend, who's now married, of course, and was married at the time, announcing that they're pregnant, him and his wife. They're pregnant and they're expecting a child. 
and I find this promise ring on the same day. Kind of weird. (laughs) Kind of coincidental, bit of a synchronicity. Of course, I tend to read into things, see things as signs. So I sat down to meditate, and I mentioned this in the last podcast episode about meditating and listening, right? Meditating and listening for guidance. So I sit down with this ring in the palm of my hand (laughs) and I close my eyes and I ask the universe, what the heck am I supposed to do with it? Because it's a nice ring. It has a diamond in it. I don't want to throw it away. I don't know if I'm supposed to pawn it off or give it to somebody. (laughs) I don't really even know why I have it. So I ask the universe, what am I supposed to do with this ring? Why am I finding this ring right now, three days before I leave for India, with my dad's watch, when I'm feeling sentimental in my heart spaces, why do I find this ring? What am I supposed to do with it? And then I listen, because we should always listen in our meditations, right? Listen after we ask the questions. And in the listening, I didn't get an answer as to why I found the ring. But I did get an answer as to what I should do with the ring. The universe told me to throw that ring in the Ganges. Now, I didn't even know if we were going to be near the Ganges on my India trip. I had no idea why the universe would tell me to throw the ring in the river. but. I listened to the guidance and I came out of that meditation and I made sure to pack that ring away with some of my safekeepings for my trip. And I made a commitment to throw that ring in the Ganges. The reason that I'm sharing this story with you or this part of the story is because I really wasn't sure up until that moment if I was still going to go to India. Even though I was still kind of bound and determined, despite my husband wanting me to not to, even though I was disappointed that Halo was no longer going on this trip, this woman that I chose um, the trip because she was leading it, even though these things weren't happening, I was still determined to go. But there was a doubt in my mind. I mean, going to India for nearly a month is a big journey. And going by myself, by the way, I'm meeting up with a group of strangers And then I also had plans to travel by myself for five or six days. And it was scary. It was intimidating. But finding that ring in that moment of looking for the watch of my dad's, feeling sentimental, finding this ring of my ex, and after meditating, being told that I need to go to India, take the ring and throw it in the river, I just knew that was confirmation that I had to go on this journey. I had to go on this journey no matter what, no matter the letdowns, no matter the disappointments, no matter the things going unplanned, I still had to go. So I wrote in my journal about a week before my trip. I found the ring about three days before my trip. Received that message to throw it in the Ganges. But about a week before I left for India, I wrote in my journal after having another vision come through. And not necessarily in a meditation, but I was leading a guided relaxation, a shavasana in my yoga class. And while I was sitting there in the silence holding space for my students, I had a vision come to me and I had a bit of a message come to me. And I just want to wrap up this episode, this precursor to my India trip with the excerpt from this journal. I just want to read from the journal And share with you what came to me. 
So six days before I left for India, I wrote in my journal, I saw you today. And I saw you yesterday too, but today it was different. Yesterday, I saw your face and your little baby spirit as if you were appearing when I least expect it to let me know you're coming and preparing for your arrival. Yesterday, I saw your face illuminated in a shade of ultraviolet blue, like that ghostly blue you see on TV or in the ether. And that blue was how I knew you were here in spirit form. You are reincarnating as I think of you now. Today, you again came to me in Shavasana. As I am guiding others, you drop in unexpectedly, and I feel you. Something in me today feels different, anxious, ready but also not feeling ready, but knowing and trusting that I am. So I see you, baby. I feel you coming to me. I feel my time calling me to step into motherhood, and I know that I must go to India in order to become a mother. I'm feeling this pull to get back to my ancient knowings, to get back to seeking the wisdom of my ancient elders and the medicine gifts that they've blessed me with. I've been seeking to understand the wisdom and magic that's been passed to me through my bloodline. I've been feeling an urge to connect to the womb workers, or perhaps I'm becoming one myself. I know I'm becoming a transformational healer, or maybe I'm just becoming a transformer, or maybe I should call myself a shapeshifter because I am ever evolving both myself whilst I help others do the same. I am an archetypal goddess, priestess, messenger of the divine. I am a natural alchemist, and I feel Gaia within me and all around me. Everything I really know is already inside, yet I know these travels I desire are important to help me uncover the missing link in my gifts and my one true path. I know all of the answers are coming to me now. As I dive deeper into the calling of uniting women, I pray for the support of my own journey. I ask for inner wisdom and strength. I ask that this journey propel me into the most direct course of action that aligns with my dharma and my purpose. I am ready, baby. Let's begin our journey. The theme for November is turning the soil. It is a time to plant seeds. It is a time to fertilize. And it is a time to find gratitude for the harvest of health, family, and friends. Things I need for India are now coming to me. Abundance surrounds me even now. Abundance even beyond this is coming. I wrote that underneath the full beaver supermoon in November of 2017, six days before I departed to India. I could have never known what would rise up out of my journey ahead. I could never know if this vision coming to me of this little baby boy would come true or not. Truly, I had no idea what would unfold on my India journey, but I knew in my heart of hearts, in my soul of souls, in my truest desire that I absolutely had to go. I knew that if I went to India, my life would be forever changed in the best of ways. I knew if I went on this spiritual pilgrimage, I would finally find my one true path. This is what I have for you today, friends. 
I just wanted to start by sharing, not only in the previous episode, the why, why I chose to go to India, but I also wanted to share in this episode just the series of events leading up to it. Just that week before, that one week before, those few weeks before my trip, I find out my leader's no longer going. My husband doesn't want me to go. (laughs) I start having doubts myself. But also, six days before I go, I have a vision of my baby. And I have this calling rise up in me, confirming that I need to go. Three days before my trip, I receive this message that I have to take this physical object to India and throw it in the Ganges. It was very auspicious, these events leading up to my journey. And again, I had a choice, right? Just like in the previous episode, I mentioned this choice or this crossroads that sometimes we come to that makes us really question what we want, question our choices. And in the previous episode, I mentioned it was You know, this other opportunity that I had to go to India that I turned down because I knew in my heart of hearts I wanted to get pregnant during that time when that India trip was available. But even here now, as I make this choice to go on this different trip and this different journey, several weeks before the event, I am presented with a choice. I am presented with a crossroads to go or not to go. And these are examples of karmic crossroads that come our way. And I want to mention that there's no right or wrong when we have these choices come across our path. You know, if I had chosen to go on that other India trip in January of 2018 with my teacher, Kate, then I probably would have had a series of other events unfold to put me on a particular path. Maybe it would have kept me in the same karmic lesson. Maybe it would have evolved me. And just here in this choice, I know that if I had chosen to not go to India, to cancel my trip at the last minute, that it wouldn't necessarily be the wrong choice. It would just be a choice that keeps me in the same karmic loop that I was in. I would have been experiencing the same choices and the same lessons and the same opportunities. But I knew that if I committed, to really doing this big thing that's very scary and very exotic. I knew that if I made that choice, despite all of these other things coming up, that it was going to evolve me as well, that it was going to put me on my next evolution, my next chapter. Maybe that's motherhood. Maybe that was something else. But I knew that I had to go despite that opportunity to not because I could have said no with everything that had happened. This is what I have for you today, friends. In our next episode, I'll be sharing day one of my travels, a little bit of my flight experience across the world, and then my day one adventures in Calcutta, India. And from then on, every episode, moving forward, will be all about my journey through the motherland. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to my story. Until we meet again, may we all be happy. May we all be healthy. May we all feel safe and no peace. And may we all feel loved, be loved, and love one another. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Blessed be. I hope today's message served you. If you enjoy the Follow Your Path podcast, I would love for you to leave a review. As a thank you, every month I do a drawing from the reviews and I choose one person to win a free one hour, one-on-one soul coaching session with me. This can be done in person or online depending on where you are. I also feature reviews on my website and social media. So thank you for the feedback and the testimonials. It truly is an honor to be here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to meeting with you again in the next episode.
सारी रात जग